Ooh, maybe we see 15 frames. Ooh, ah, yeah, ooh, ah, that's pretty cool. How about 60? Ah, boom, boom, yo. I drew these guys stoked to bring them into C4D, watch them dance around, little, you know. I hope you're having a great day. Like and subscribe. Let's jump into C4D. Welcome to the wonderful world of Cinema 4D where we can start with a sphere. So we're gonna start with a sphere. We're gonna say NC or NB to turn on uh, garage shading lines. Then we're gonna switch this to a hexahedron because it'll give us a bit of an easier time when we wanna model this guy. Also, we want less segments because it'll actually make our life easier. Um, I think that's a good start. And now I'm gonna press C on the keyboard to make it editable. So now, if I go to my face selection, I can actually grab UL will let me select loops on the keyboard and I can grab these points and kind of move them around. And uh, I'll put my little mushroom up on the screen for you. I'm guessing you're gonna have something of your own to work with unless you wanna just follow my tutorial exactly. But I've got it on my desk here and I'm just kind of Change in these shapes, um, clicking UL to select a ring. I might want to grab these edges here, UL again, and uh, and then E to either move them or T to scale them up or down until I get something that looks kind of mushroomy-ish. UL, grab faces here again. I'm having some trouble selecting this loop, so I'm just going to grab my live selection and just grab these polygons here and move them up and then maybe just grab this middle one and, and move it up too. So we have a basic mushroom shape. Now we're gonna drop this sphere in a subdivision surface. Here's a little double mean hit for you. Oh yeah, look at that. So much smoother. Uh, now I can still UL select our loops of this sphere and scale them as we wish. I accidentally locked my Y axis, and I'll do this sometimes by pressing Y, X, and Z. So be careful of that, because if we have a Z axis locked and we scale this, it's not gonna scale uniformly. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's honestly like pretty close to what I want already. So we're gonna move on here. I'm just gonna, yeah. Well, whoops. Where is the axis locked there? Scale this guy up a bit more. Cool. All right, I like it. Um, you know what? Let's just let's just bring these guys in a tiny bit as well. Sweet. Now, if we want to create some more definition down there, honestly, we don't right now, so we're not going to talk about that yet. Okay, cool. So now we need a stem for this little dude. There's two ways to do it. One is to create a new piece of geometry which will give us a bit more definition down there. The other is to do something else, which I'll show you how to do. So you click this Q, this polygon, hold control, and just drag it down. And that extrudes it. And now I'm going to do that a few times because the more times you do it, the kind of the more. And throughout the process, I'm going to command Z. I can actually go T and scale this guy up, which will give me a bit more of a, you know, I can kind of save some time instead of having to go back and select things later by... So that's cool. I mean, that's that's cool. But that's not what I really want these guys to look like. I wanted them to be a bit more, like, stylized and chunky, like this. Honestly, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't think we need to use two different objects. I think we'll just use the one. Um, yeah, that's sweet. Cool. So if I want this to look more like the piece I drew, it would be, let's see here, whoops, I accidentally hit L, L will turn on your access tool, so you can move the axis, but you don't want to do that for modeling, it's not very helpful, um, so really we want these guys to be kind of chunky and short, squatty little dudes. Yeah, like that. That's nice. That is nice. Uh, no, no loop selection. Just a good old 
normal live selection here. Grab. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty sweet. That feels great. I like it more than my drawing. Whoa, super chunky. Honestly, I think... I think that's a good start. Okay, cool. Let's let's talk about adding some some eyes to these bad boys. Um, I want to grab a probably grab a sphere. No, let's do a cube. I mean, you can really. There's so many ways to go about this, and pretty much all of them work. Um, we're gonna bring our cube out, scale it down. Maybe we want it to be a bit taller. Uh, and have a few more segments in the Y. Yeah, um, let's just see how that looks in a subdivision surface. That looks a lot like the eyes that I had in mind. So we're just going to press C to make that editable again. Um, and that's cool. And then I keep saying this is so many ways to go about this, but one thing that we're going to do, which might just keep things simple, is we're going to add a bend deformer to this. So I'm going to hold shift while I grab a bend deformer. So it places it underneath this automatically and makes it the right size. And I like to kind of scale them up just a little more because I feel like it generally gives me better results. And then I can increase the strength of this bend, change the angle. So it looks like 90 is what we want. And that's just going to help us align this to... By the way, switching from W will give you world axis versus the axis of the object. Because now we want to move it into this. You know, it's helpful to have the world axis. And now we might want to go back to the axis of the object. Rotate it, R for rotation. Bring it down. That's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Um, we can actually add as many of these deformers as we want. And I think there's one called bulge. Yeah. So I'm going to use that too. And you can see it's not really the right size and shape. So we're going to make it just a bit bigger. And then if we change the strength and the curvature, I want to kind of, yeah, I want that, you know, I want the middle of this to be a bit more chunky than the edges. And that's kind of doing what I want, but only so much. Sometimes changing the shape of the deformer will help, but in this case, it's pretty close. I could also try duplicating this. Nah. All right, so that's good. So let's just, let's just, yeah, let's just connect objects and delete. Okay, so now we've got that as its own geometry. We call this the I. And then uh, MC will bring up your sculpting tools. And you got a bunch of cool tools in here. I like smear and pull a lot. Um, I'm going to push these in just a little bit. And then I'm going to grab my pull. And I'm going to hold control, which inverts the power. So instead of pulling, it's going to push. Okay. And I'm just going to, like, push these. Maybe hold control. Just push these down a little bit. Just so they get a bit more, you know, in it. They're, like, they're freaking in it. They're, like, inserted in there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That looks great. And then maybe I'll use this on the side here. Switch to visible only so I'm not pulling... Because otherwise, you know, I'll be pulling the whole eyeball. But what I really want to do is I just want to make it a little thicker on the edge. So I'm going to visible only. We'll make sure I'm only selecting what I can see. And then I'll hold control. Whoops. <laughs> I won't hold control. I'll just pull. And maybe I'll drop the power way down here. Just just to get it a little. Yeah, that's nice. That's great. Cool. And then we can, if we want, probably want two of these guys. Wow, that looks sweet. Let's just see how it looks. Out of curiosity. MC. Pull up our brush again um, if we push that's kind of cool that's kind of what I wanted it's more stylized okay cool so and then maybe it's just too bulging off the thing so we can just T and just kind of well hmm. okay you know what it's cool it's great it's awesome I love it I love it I love it I like it a lot Okay, so that's not really going to work. So, a um, couple ways to do this. Again, uh, I think how we probably want to do this is just drop it in a symmetry object. 
So I'm gonna take the eye, I'm gonna create a symmetry object on its own because um, we want it to be at the center of our scene, which is probably one of these guys. Sorry guys, symmetry, symmetry. I think it's right in here. Ah, there it is, symmetry, cool. And then we drop our eye in there, boom. Look at that, easy peasy. What's cool is we can move move these around now. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, and just just kind of, we can even rotate them and it'll keep things symmetrical. Again, I'm kind of going back and like checking my reference just to make sure it does feel like. Oh, I like them pointed up. Nice, look at those guys. Those are awesome. Yeah. Um, and I'll show you if we wanted to like kind of subtract a little bit around the eye, we could just to make it feel a little bit more defined. But honestly, this is this is looking pretty sweet. So I think we should move on to the mouth. Let's move on to the mouth. So the, I'm gonna. Uh, this is what our thing looks like without the subdivision surface. It's insane. I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna connect objects and delete here. Um, and honestly, I'm gonna save a version because I like this. So we're just gonna call this like base mush, and then this is gonna be our um, merged mush body, and then this one will connect objects and delete. Um, and we can just turn this guy off for now. But it's just nice to have a backup. Cool. Let's make this mouth. So if we want to be lazy, we could just start with the eye shape. Uh, I think that would work fine. I'm going to hold control, drag it under here. I'm going to drop this guy in a bool. And you can find the bool in this thing if you haven't added it to your customized layout. And then um, we'll also drop the eyeball in here. And we'll just put the eye where the mouth we want the mouth to be. Look at that, because the bowl, it's cutting out. Isn't that cool? It's really hard to tell what's going on, so I'm just gonna go here, coordinates, and zero out the rotation, bring it out here. We can take it out for a second just so we can see. So what we probably want is like, like a 90, by the way, right-clicking these numbers brings you, um, right-clicking these numbers resets them. So maybe we want like this, Hit L to edit the axis of it. Then we could move the axis so it's in the right place for our liking here. And then L again to turn off that axis editor. It's also available right here or somewhere slightly different if we have different layouts. Okay. Now we're just gonna move them back in and drop them back in the bool. Whoops. There we go. That's cool. He looks slightly haunting and scary as fuck right now. I don't like it. No, it's creepy. Oh, that's, that's a little better. I'm just kind of play with this. Yeah, that's better. Mostly about the eyes here. Um, and now if we wanted, we can edit this. So MC again to pull up our sculpting tool. I could do smear and I can just kind of like drag this guy. Um, that's honestly probably the one we want to use. We could turn up the power a little bit and just kind of like adjust the shape of this little feller's mouth. But we probably want visible only to be off now because it'll only be grabbing these edges, which is weird. We really want to grab the whole, whole thing. Uh -huh. Is it? Okay. So we also might need to do a little bit of a pull here to make sure that it's what's happening is, you know, it needs to intersect if it's not sticking outside of this cube, this, this mushroom body, then it's not going to, we're not going to see it because the way the bool works is it just subtracts. Yeah, that's cool. Not, I don't like it as much as I did before. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I think something in the middle 
of what I have between the two. So MCU brush, I'm gonna just switch back to smear here. Just, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. What's up with this? This is janky. Yeah, it's a little janky. I think, I think we need to push. Eh. And if we wanted to drop this in a subdivision, it'll smooth out that, it'll, it's probably overkill. So another trick is we can just um, click on the eye, polygon selection, select all, command A, control A, right click, uh, subdivide settings, and then just one smooth, sub smooth subdivision, which is like less polygons, I think, in this case. Cool. I think the mouth should have a little bit of lips. I think that would help. So, yeah. If you want to see me make lips, I'll show you. You don't need to. We could just skip to the dancing part at this point. But it's a handy trick to know. We could use it for like little rings around the eyes too if we wanted. So let's do it. First of all, let's move this guy up to the ground plane here. And let's just give him a little bit of ground to stand on so we can see him better. Maybe we'll bump this guy up to 50 by 50 and we'll just drop a noise, a displacer with the shading set to noise and uh, we'll bump up the scale of this noise until we can kind of see it, see how we can see it. And then uh, we can also come to the displacer and just add some height here. Just so he's, yeah. That's nice. It's better. Mushroom has a home. Now. Yay! Yay! Okay, cool. I really want to get to animating this guy. I honestly don't think we need lips. And sometimes they're a hassle. But the way I do it is with spline wrap. Um, you guys want to see it? Okay, I'll show it to you. So you, you would grab a spline. Uh, you look from like one of these side side of front view, and then um, just kind of draw the shape of the mouth, trace the mouth shape here, like so, like thus, boom. And then we drop this guy in a sweep object. We, we want a circle too, so we'll just grab a circle, and then we want a Spline wrap is probably what it's called, which uh, is right here. Sweet. Never mind. We're not sweet. Drop the circle and then the spline below it. You get this crazy thing. Drop the spline above it. You get that crazy thing. I think we want the spline below it. We want the circle to be way smaller. Let's drop it way down to 20. Where to go? Who will know? Oh, I see it. There it is. So it's just inside our little guy. So we're just gonna grab the whole sweep object, pull it out, and it looks like we probably don't want 20. Those are some puffy ass lips. Let's drop it way down to like two. That's not too bad. It's all right. Let's say three. Okay. Um, Adam, why is it so chunky? Honestly, I wish I could tell you. There's probably a better way to do this. Maybe we like change this to like a different kind of spline that looks better. Cubic Akima B spline. I like that. Let's stick with that. Yep, B spline. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna bring our sweep pretty much as close to here as we can, and then we're gonna have to go into our spline. I'm just gonna turn the sweep off for a minute. We're gonna have to edit these individual points. And this is why I said it's a hassle. Nobody likes doing this. One thing that helps is we can grab our Rectangle selection, whoops, and we can kind of do more of them at once. Which will give us this slightly faster approach. Yeah. Two hours later, he had the mouth completed. Like that, like this, like that, like that, like this. Kind of want just to be right on the edge. You know, if you're being a fancy, like, studio here, you'd be a lot more careful. But, like, nobody cares. Really. As long as it looks cool. You know? There's definitely fancy ways to go about this, but, like, I'm getting it done, aren't I? Okay, cool. So, 
Boom. That's better. Those are some nice little lips. I think I think we could I think we could just do a little something near. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you can use this rectangle selection even when you don't see the points, just to kind of grab whatever might be there. Hey, look at that. That's great. That is awesome. Yeah, so we could do that for the eyes if we wanted. Um, but let's talk about let's t you, you know how to do it now. So let's just talk about doing some some motion, baby. That's the fun stuff. All right, I want this guy to be bouncing. Oh, I kind of want him to have hands too, but we'll talk about that later. All right, bouncing. So we want him to biggity bounce. I think the mouth. I think we could pretty much just connect all this now. This is our ground. Um, the body and the, the eyes. We want the eyes to be their own layer. Okay, I want to be able to texture this stuff on its own later, but I don't want to deal with that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some quick textures. Uh, I've got a shortcut for my octane materials down here. So I think we want to be glossy for the eyes. Uh, and we'll just drop these on here and then script. Let's make it black. And then, oh, it's so black. It's really intense. Cheapers. Let's do, let's do that kind of black. And then um, we want a new one, say diffuse for the body. I'm going to call this uh, stump. And then we want another one for the cap. Um, and just for simplicity's sake, the cap will be pink. And the stump will be slightly yellow. Okay. So now we need to select the polygons that we want for the cap. I'm going to turn off the ground because it's getting annoying. Um, and we want something for the inside of the mouth too. So we'll just, just do a quick mouth interior and, uh, maybe that will be just a darker color of the, the body color. So like, kind of like a, like a, this, like a, this or that, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, that looks nice. Looking real nice. Actually, it looks super creepy, but he'll look happy again soon. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so let's let's do our let's select the body. Let's see here. Is this our body? The body and the eyes. Um, yeah. So we're just gonna texture the body really quick. So we're just gonna grab a rectangle selection here. So we want all this and a little bit more. Maybe UL for ring selection. Whoops. Hold shift to add to your selection. Um, whoops. Command Z. Go in here. Hold shift. Continue adding until we feel satisfied, which I think that's probably a good amount for the stump. So now we're going to, we can delete this material. We're going to drop this guy on the selection and it'll create this little handy selection tag. And then UI will invert that selection. So now we can drop this on the cap and we get another selection tag. And now if I wanna change these materials later, super easy to do. Um, we can also grab this base. Oh, that's not it, the mouth. Um, that's the mouth. And uh, we'll grab the mouth inner and drop that on this thing which will make it show up inside the mouth, I think. Yeah, there it is. And then, um, honestly, I think the lips should probably just also be like a similar color. So maybe it'll just be like a little bit darker or something. Maybe a little more orange, I don't know. And then we can change this later. So we'll just drop this onto the lips, which is the sweep object, connect objects and delete. Okay, okay, okay. All right, before we get too excited, we want to animate this guy, but we also might want to have other variations of mushrooms. Maybe one with like a mouth that's like slightly different. So he's like, ooh, and the other one's like, ah, you know what I mean? So if we want to do that, let's just save all of our work here. Alt G, this is uh, 
um, editable. Not edible. <laughs> and then we'll duplicate this guy. And uh, this time we'll connect objects and delete. And we'll say dancing. Mush. Cool. And then we'll just make a null here and just call this backups. Cool. So now we got our dancing mushroom. Got our ground again. It's looking good. It's looking like a happy little feller. Yeah. All right. We want to um, freaking make this guy move and bounce, yo. Yeah. So to do that, we will use the magical power of Deformers. And maybe we want to start with a Bend Deformer. Let's try this one. I've been wanting to try this one. So just make sure, we, where is it? Why don't we see it? Go back to object mode, maybe. Strange. I usually see a little box. Oh, there it is. It's on the top and the bottom. So if we if we use if we do something with these these parameters here, we'll get we'll get something to happen. Usually, um. oh ho ho! There he is. There's the little bouncing dude. That's what I'm talking about. We gotta hide our backups so we don't see them. Which one was I just messing with? You guys remember the bottom, the aspect, the factor. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that is awesome. We got so much potential. So I think we should maybe, maybe, what if we have, so we could just, mm, we could turn on. Oh yeah, that is just great. That is great. Okay. Uh, I'm getting excited. I haven't, I haven't used this to farm before, so this is a new thing for me too, but it's looking pretty sweet. I think what we definitely want is the ground. We want it to be happening from the ground. So let's just turn it on and we can try moving around the top. And so maybe we want the bottom to be, you know, we want the bottom to be where the, the ground is, at the, where the base of the mushroom is. We want the top to be like, We just move it. Oh, we just move it. Okay, cool. So, we're rotating it over. Huh. Now, what happens? Let me mess with this guy. It's getting better. It's getting better. See how now the ground, this this point right here, isn't moving. Um. So what I did is I I flipped it over. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's just awesome. I flipped the whole thing over. So now, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're getting what we want. But, of course, obviously, it's really distorting the cap, which we don't want. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to fall off. I'm going to grab a linear field. And we can use, yeah, we use linear fields. We'll just click on it. And then um, let's see what happens as we mess with this again. God, I keep forgetting which one it is. It's the factor. Yeah, it's the factor. Okay. And if we zoom out, you'll see it's the linear field is going one direction. So it's controlling what it sees, but it's not helping that much. I think it'd be more fun if the factor was already animated. We'll do that in just a second. So I'm going to take the linear field. I'll rotate it until I'm satisfied. I think this is the way I want. Holding shift so I snap to five degrees. And then uh, we'll do this. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. What's going on? Maybe we have the wrong direction. Wow, that is so wild.
Well, I mean, food. That's pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna use that. We're not gonna worry about the stem too much right now. That's pretty sick. Let's animate that to start. So we want to go from like 86 to like 108 back to like like 84 and 108, let's say. So we're going to grab a signal tag. This is fun stuff. Drop it on here. So right click signal. Um, and then we're going to grab a, and you only you have to install the signal plugin, guys. I hope you have it. We're going to say smooth. And we're going to grab our factor, drop it on here. And then we can say our factor is at a max of 108 and a minimum of 84. Okay. We have a nice S curve here. We can grab a ping pong and maybe we just set this to be 60 and we set our timeline to be 120. Look at that. That seems happy. That's nice. We want to see faster. We just drop it down to 30. Cool. If we wanted now, we can kind of still play with this linear field and we could say, oh, well, what if the field was up here versus if the field was down here? Getting almost nothing down there. But this is nice. I like that a lot. Feels like he's kind of breathing or something. So let's do another deformer. So we're just going to grab. Uh, hold shift when we're on the dancing mush and we'll get a bend deformer. Oh, dude, I freaking love bend deformers. Look at that. Wow, that is just so great. Okay, I was just dragging it, but you can see the potential is already there. We just need to grab our signal tag again. Maybe we'll uh, set an angle in here and we'll say the max will be Wait, strength. I'm sorry, guys. Not angle. Grab the strength. Drop it on here. And then we can say the max is that much. And the minimum is negative roughly that much. And we bring this down, this point down. We switch to ping pong. Maybe we want it to be 60. Maybe we want this to be more of a um, we want to change the angle here so it goes more like front and back. Of course, we can keyframe that too. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Just for fun, let's let's grab a quick null. Um, call this our camera remover. Hold shift, drop a camera in there. Uh, pull our camera back so we can see this guy. Maybe we'll say our camera remover should have. A signal tag um, with a rotation in the Y, the pitch? No, in the, the horizontal axis. So just grab this guy, drop it on here. Say we want a nice linear right click. Uh, we want keyframes set to spline presets linear. Uh, max will be 360. And will be 120. And now we'll have a nice. You can see this guy is, if we wanted to spin around it. That's cool. I mean, honestly, it's moving too fast. So let's say 240. And we want our camera mover to end at 240. And you'll see we'll have a problem. Will we? No, we won't. Amazing. Signal is just awesome. Okay, so let's just keep playing around here. I think. We can have another bend deformer. Um, you just duplicate this guy, and it's going to be more extreme because it's doing the exact same thing. But if we wanted, we could just come to the object. We got a little bit of this happening, you know. So maybe we just get rid of this current signal tag, and we say the strength should be maybe a bit less intense. Let's so just say 20. We want to put a new signal tag on here, and we want it to be the angle. That's controlled, and uh, 
Yeah. And so it'll go from 90. Let's just see how that looks. And let's jump out of our camera so things aren't moving around too much. We can hide our camera because it's kind of annoying to see it. Let's just go in. Let's give it a full 360 here. Uh, max is 360. And should be, say, 60. It's going to go pretty quick. And then let's just say uh, loop. I don't like that at all. I mean, it's kind of cool, but let's just, well, let's just say uh, ping pong and drop it to 180 and just see how that looks. That's better. Oh, he's so happy, dude. Now, what's fun about signals, we can also add a little bit of noise in here, which will make things feel a bit more organic. Um, so if we wanted to, we would go into our modifiers, grab a noise. You can see already the noise is affecting this guy. It's not looping, but we can change that. We can just set the loop point to 240. You know? That's cool. And then if it's like, that looks crappy because it's way too fast, I'm like, I agree. Drop it down to point 0.2. Now it's really subtle, but it's adding this additional layer of like, kind of like professionalism or human organicness to the animation, which really just takes things to another level. Um... Yeah, that's sick. That's super sick. Uh, let's see what other defaults we can play with. Or, or real quick, just for fun, let's just see if we switch this bend. This is the this is the like rotate bend, and this is like the dance bounce bend. Um, okay, we'll just call it bounce bend. And. Uh, This is the head squash. Cool. Um, what's cool is we can always come in and edit these things. So if we wanted to just see what happens if we like increase the factor here, or just for fun, if we drop this to like 15, the head's going to be doing like a. I mean, this is sweet for music animations, of course, because you can really like freaking crank this stuff up and just be like, what the fuck, dude, get it, yo, what? that's super sick. Um, and what's great about Signal is, you know, if it's just going to make it really easy. Like if we have like 20 of these guys, we want them all to be like slightly offset and going at different times. It, it gets really simple. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's looking pretty sweet. Okay, sweet. Um, what's next folks? What do we want to do? Do you want to try another deformer? I mean, he's looking great already. Let's just try one or two more just for fun. So we're going to grab this guy, grab another deformer, maybe like a, how about a twist? Yeah, let's try a twist. Woo -hoo, I like it. Sick, dude. See how it kind of distorts his eyes a little bit? I think that's so fun. Wow, he just looks like he's having a blast, man. Again, signal, grab this, 87 degrees uh bring it back down to say negative 60 is the low bring it all the way over to negative 60 now at the beginning it's gonna be a negative 60 whoa now we're gonna maybe say this happens every 120 frames and uh it ping pongs and now if we play it we'll be getting this which is freaking cool dude and maybe we want to see what happens if it's just at 30 frames hmm Oh, ah, ooh, maybe we see 15 frames. Oh, ah, yeah, oh, ah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, ah, it's pretty cool. How about 60? Ah, uh, ba boom, ch yeah, ba boom. Ah, that's actually might be my favorite, dude. That's pretty sweet. It's kind of, it's kind of too, feels too robotic, though. Honestly, I think the 120 is a winner for right now. So we'll just leave it at that. That's sick. And also, it's too powerful. So what if we go to Twist and bring down the... What's the volume? Is that really going to dial it back? Oh, that's such a handy... That's just so awesome, dude. Because otherwise, you'd be like going in and editing all these individual keyframes for each layer. It'd be crazy. Instead, you just select the tag and drop the volume. Okay, so now that we have this guy looking fucking stellar... 
Um, let's let's just turn off. Let's just hide all of these because they're annoying to look at. So just, oops. Um, we'll just do that, and then we'll do it one more time. I'll hide them from our editor. Hide the linear field. So cool. So cool. I kind of want to add a little bit of uh, noise to this twist real quick. Oh, of course, we got to make sure it loops at 240. <laughs> That's fun. How about uh, we increase the variation to 60? It's going to be really... All right, this is just ridiculous, but just for fun. Let's say in, variation is 180, and uh, the speed is fucking 10. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, no, oh, my God. Oh, how about five? Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, how about like we just do like 10 degrees? Oh, now he's excited. I was kind of tweaking out, though. How about... Uh, oh, yeah. How about 100? Oh, geez. How about we increase the bias? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, let me just say, like, the variation's actually, like, 20. Oh, man. How about fucking 80? Yo. How about fucking 3,000? Oh, so sick, yo. That's what happens right before the drop. You, like, fucking cue that one. Jeepers. How about how about just uh, 1,000? 100. Oh, that's also great. How about 1,000? And then we freaking bring the speed way down to, like, 2. If you bring the speed of like, 1. <laughs> 1. Oh, it's so twisted. I mean, yeah, that doesn't work. We're losing the eyes too much. But I do like... I like this guy. I liked... This guy's just crazy. I think I'm a fan of this one. I think we should just keep one of these. So this is like tweaking mush. And then uh, we'll just hide this guy. <laughs> and then we'll come back to this guy and we'll be like, yo, twist. Come on. Chill out with the noise, bro. Chill out with the noise delete that noise all right that was fun you guys want to you guys want to do a little texturing environment design are you interested in that would you like to learn would you like to see that or should we do some arms i mean i do love the idea of some funky wacky arms i haven't i think we should do that first if i'm being honest it's like less satisfying than texturing and lighting but it'd be so cool all right let's do it so we're gonna grab a how about a cylinder i think these will be really simple Grab a cylinder. Maybe we want it to have like that many height segments and only that many rotation segments. Yeah. And then uh, I'd like a hand, but I don't want to model a hand. You could probably find a quick, quick like cartoon hand on a, like CG Trader or something. But. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will do our own hand. A uh, very simple, simple hand here. We'll just we'll make the sphere a child of the cylinder and we'll decrease its radius a bit. And then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure its coordinates are zeroed out here, except this one can be 250. And because uh, that then it's like at the top of, you know, it's just hanging out up here. And then maybe we want to uh, add some fingers to said hand so we could we can do that uh, ooh, 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 my dude I have an idea all you gotta do is take our sphere and uh, decrease the segments more so it's like 8 or something how about 12 that's probably good and then um yeah, and then we would just grab our, we make it editable, press C, grab our face selection on this fur, live selection. You gotta pause this because otherwise it's not gonna let me select. Um, I am a fan of editing while it's playing though. I'm weird like that. It's just fun. Do this. Oh, that's not gonna work. Okay, Command Z. We need our sphere to be a different kind of sphere. We need it to be that hexahedron. It's probably good. And we probably don't need so many segments. 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. C. All right, so now let's say thumb, let's say finger one, finger two, <laughs> finger three. Uh, how does that look in a subdivision surface? Hey, that's not bad. That's a nice little mushroom hand thing. We can come into our sphere. Oh, jeepers. We can come into our sphere and select this. Make it a bit fatter. We can do the same. I'm also, I'm holding control to extrude these now. Just so I can uh, get a bit more definition up there. Oh, that looks like crap. Maybe we just ex just expand it. Um, and then uh, what happens if we pull this guy in? It's so weird. UL, can we select this loop here? No, it's going to be weird. Why don't we just grab our live selection, hold shift, just grab these guys, maybe make them not quite so chunky. Whoops. Maybe we just grab the middle one and do that even more. Maybe we, should, maybe we should take this guy in a little bit. I don't know. Is that how a hand looks? That doesn't look much like, but who cares? It's a cartoon. Nobody can tell you you're wrong if it's art. I think... Honestly, I think that's pretty stellar. That is, I'm feeling, I'm feeling stellar. Are you guys feeling stellar about that? I feel like that is pretty swifty. We can also grab this line and grab some point, some some edges here, and just kind of fuck with those a little bit, like that, and maybe we like freaking do something like that. I mean, honestly, that's way better than I thought it was gonna be, and that was super fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are great. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So then we could also, if we wanted, we could make this a little more stylized. It'd be cool. So we could take our cylinder and give it less segments in the rotation and in the height. Yeah. And then C to make it editable. And for the record, we still have this stuff underneath it. And then UL. We can just kind of, you know... Yeah, I think let's just grab these edges, scale them down. Let's see here. We're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that for a minute, so we can fix it in a minute. All right, cool, cool. Are you cool with that? Cool. And I think those are probably it's probably too tall, so we probably don't need all of it. But it's nice to have the extra geometry that's just hidden underground in case you want to use it. Um, or actually, let's not do that. Let's just grab these bases with our rectangular selection. We can turn off the ground for a minute. We do this, do this, 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 and then maybe we come in, let's drop this guy back into our subdivision surface here. We can apply, let's just pull this out for a minute. Okay, cool. Cylinder goes into a subdivision surface. This is the hand. This is the arm. And uh, maybe we take UL, this, we just scale it up a lot. So it's got, you know, so it's got like a base thing. Nice. That was, that was control, by the way. Um, it's probably overkill. Yeah, that's cool. And then we do the same thing up here. So we just say UL uh, control to extrude. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Maybe not not in this axis as much more of this one. You know? That's fun. Yeah, that's fun. Cool. Okay. Sweet. Let's take all these guys. Uh Let's just, whoops, Alt-G, we're going to call this the arm editable, save, control, we're just going to drop this to our backups, and then this one will connect objects and delete. Nice. Just because, you know, if you ever want to, like, change this stuff, and then you're like, oh, I have to do it all over again, and you don't. Cool. We want our access point at the base. 
Yeah, perfect. Well, up a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, let's uh, bring our ground back. Whoops. Turn off L for movement. Okay. Cool. Well, I don't love it, to be honest. I, w I want it to look more like a glove. I wanted there to be more definition, which we can probably do, but for the purpose of keeping things quick here, maybe we won't. But yeah, yeah, we won't do it right now. It's okay. Okay, cool. So, I mean, honestly, it's probably gonna look sweet. So let's start deforming this bad boy. Start with the bend. Yeah. What's fun is, you know, bounce bend. We can just grab this signal tag, travel right on here, and instantly it's got the same bounce bend, which is just so clutch. And then if we wanted, we could take this size. This is what I love to do, bro. This is like the most fun part. Okay, so now we, we just like freaking say we want to do this. We rotate this, say 180 degrees. What do we get? Oh, that's so cool. But we probably want these both to be set to keep length. What happens if we don't have one of them? And if we don't have the top one. Okay. That's kind of fun. Um, I think we need one more at the very top here. And we need it. This one should not have the key plank thing on, so it does bend. That is so weird. What if the bottom one doesn't have the key plank thing on? Huh. What if none of them do? Well, it really... Oops. Hmm. Okay, keep blank necessary. Honestly, that's 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 pretty fun. I'm not really opposed to that. That's pretty cool. Um Yeah, I mean we just want that right near the base. We don't want this on the hand, we just want it near it. We want this guy here maybe we, we rotate the top one 90 degrees no we don't that's terrible Ooh, we go back the other way oh that's great that's more like it yeah dude vibes vibing um i think i think that's cool let's make the whole thing a bit smaller that's cool. What if we grab this twist? Let's drop a twist on here. For bulge? No, we don't want a bulge. How about a twist? And, uh, what does that do for? Oh, that's so good. That is just so great. Grab our twist thing we already set up. Hold control. What is this one doing? Let's go 180. Zero to 180. Um, say it ends at 60. Cool. How about how about uh 360? How about how about 270? How about we go the other way so it starts at 270? That's fun. Um, lit. I like it. I like it a lot. I just want. I just want it to like. I think this very bottom bend needs to not 
get so close to him. So we got to do something about that. Like the, the maybe the high, you know. Oh, that's so funky. Um, honestly, dude, that's pretty cool. You should chill out and enjoy it. Okay, deal. All right, let's uh, let's freaking let's make another one of these guys. We could just probably just do it with an instance. Pop it in over here. Rotate it at 90, 180. <laughs> That's sweet, dude. That is pretty sweet, dude. I don't know if it's better with the arms or without them, but I'm having fun either way. I think we should I think we should actually not do the instance because it'd be fun to just change up these deformers just slightly so it feels more like organic again. Um, but it's pretty great. So let's just take both of these guys, see how it looks if they're a little smaller. Yeah, that's that's probably better. I can probably spread them out a little bit. Oh, that's so much better. I was like, I don't like these arms at all. And now I'm like, the arms are sick. <laughs> yeah, vibes, dude. Fucking vibing out here, yo. Oh, and that's closer. I forgot to look at my drawing. That's pretty close to the guy's drawing. Maybe we, we make him exactly like the drawing. That's more like this ish. Yeah. I cool, yo. Cool. Let's grab a null. Let's say this is our dancing mushroom. And inside the null we have, let's hide some of these twists and things because they are just a nuisance to look at. Oops. Dancing mushroom. Body. Dancing. Cool. Wow. That is so fun. All right. I think we're almost done here. I think we just, we could play with some textures and some lighting. My voice, I haven't done a tutorial ever, or at least not in a very, very long time. My voice is getting tired, guys. I'm probably talking way too much. Probably like, wow, this guy's annoying. But that's a cool technique. <laughs> I don't know. I hope I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. Okay, I think, uh, yeah. Okay, let's jump back into our. Let's just jump back into our. Uh, oh, we got rid of our camera. Did we delete it on accident? I think we did. So be it. I don't remember doing that. Oh, camera mover shouldn't be in there. Want to see something fun with cameras real quick? This is pretty cool. Um, we can, instead of doing the rotation keyframe with the this, we'll just drop it so it's never rotating, but we can drop a noise in here. Um, and then we could just drop our speed down to like 0 0.2. Of course, we need our loop point to be 240. And, uh, you know, boom. You got some cool camera movement. Drop a variation down to 120. And uh, we could also grab another rotation keyframe. We could drop the pitch on there. But we could drop this one's variation down to just 20. And you know, you can always bump up the speed on this one so it's like faster. Eh. Probably needs to be just like five. And, uh, and you can also do that with another fun trick is to do that with the, the focal length of the camera. So I'll do like a signal here. I'll drag our focal length in and then uh, drop a noise. Um, loop point, of course, 240. And then uh, speed could be less. Could increase the bias, like 80. 
it makes it hang out near the edges more of these. Um, which is kind of fun. It's fun to have a camera available where you can kind of jump in and see the whole scene with some motion, you know? And of course we can change our our variation or we can set like the, the base is what I'm trying to say. So we could say like the base is actually 22 so it's usually like more wide angle. Um, and then we could increase the or maybe it's just 24 and the variations like freaking super high super high like freaking variation is like 30 <laughs> okay enough of that I liked it before that's nice cool um sweet you guys want to see this See what this looks like with some some textures and some lights. I know I do. All right, let's 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 make some magic happen here. We want we want to get our octane render going. Uh, pop it in here. Immediately, I'm like, oh my god, materials look like crap, but that's okay. It was bound to happen as beginning. We're gonna grab a light, a daylight. Just kind of put it in a cool spot. That's pretty cool. We're gonna make sure our ground has some. Oh, I love him! Isn't he great? Wow, he's so great. I love the way his eyes. Oh, this is awesome, dude. Wow. I feel like he might need some like cute little like cartoony reflections in his eyes, but we'll see. We could still also clean up the edge of his eye. Oof. Yeah, that's pretty rough. That's okay. We can always subdivide him for the render. Um, so. So, so, so. What is ground made out of? Well, it's made out of dirt. Um, you can get some great dirt materials in. Uh, but we're not even going to bother with that right now. In Bridge. Bridge is great. But we're just going to grab um, a Forester. I highly recommend Forester plugin. I love it. You guys should use it. Uh, Forester, Multiflora, Drop. Go into our library and just grab some grass. Let's how about some some long grass? I'm gonna grab a long grass. Um, it's it's hiding. There it is. Um, we can drop that in a octane scatter by holding Alt, and then we can just point the octane scatter at the ground. Boom! Wow! Look at all that. Maybe switch it to surface. Yep. And then we could just kind of... Maybe we say we want we want our grass to be just a little bit bigger, like 1.2. And then we want to have a lot more of it, like 10 times more. And then maybe we want the grass patch radius to be a little bit bigger too like that or something. Um, maybe we don't all want it to be the same size. So so we could we can do that a few different ways. Let's do that. Let's go into our octane scatter. Let's first grab a shape, uh, random, which you can also get here in uh, MoGraph Effector random. But I like having it available right there. And we can say that is affecting the octane scatter. And then we'll go into the, the random and just just not have it affect the position but we do want to affect the scale uniformly uh, maybe like 0.3 maybe 0.5 and eh, 0.3 three. and then definitely want to affect the rotation like a lot like 999 in the horizontal just so they're randomly rotating different directions cool I actually don't like how wide that grass patch radius is so I'm going to bring it in um, we will texture the ground properly, probably, but we could also just drop this in there for now. Just the material from the grass helps out. Um, if we want to see what that looks like, we could hide this. Because, you know, if you wanted, you could also do, like, a very stylized look of, like... Um, whoops. Coming in here and bumping this guy up to, like, 10. This guy to, like, 10. Wow, that's so weird looking. I don't like it at all. Nope. That's okay. Doesn't matter. 
Nobody can see it. Um, that's cool. That's cool. I already hate it. I hate how the grass is that color. So we're going to jump into here. We're going to make sure this material is converted by converting it. For you, that might be materials, convert materials while it's selected. Also, you can go here and say remove unused. Uh, jump into our node editor. Just make sure that we have a color correction in here. And then also pump this into the transmission. And then let's switch to switch to some nice path tracing here. Um, that's looking more grassy. And then of course we can change the saturation, we can change the exposure. I'm going for a pretty cute happy vibe here, so gotta gotta kinda dial that in. That looks that's nice. That's a good start. Cool. Let's get some more things. Maybe we duplicate our grass. And we say some of these grasses are actually going to be... I'm not going to change the materials. We're just going to make them normal grass patches instead of long grass patches. And uh, that looks worse. I don't like it. I don't like it. Straight cut grass. That's better. Cool. And then um, let's duplicate our octane scatter. Change the seed. And maybe we want some other things. How about some flowers? I love flowers. I was thinking clovers, though. I think we have clovers in here. Leaf grass. It's kind of fun. Now we do want to reset materials, insert new materials. Um, that's how that looks. How's the clover look? I feel like the clover's going to be cool. Not weed. Those are fun. Eh. Meh. Let's drop this way down. That's cool. That's actually super cool. Um, maybe we want those materials to also be converted. And let's just do one of them because who wants to bother with all of them? So I'm just going to apply this material to all of the clover materials because I'm a little lazy. Come to our node editor. We will drag some color correction in here. Um, again, to the transmission. And then maybe we just want this to be like that and I like Pat cool um, let's do some more let's say we want I mean honestly we could I liked I liked having a lot more grass so we could just kind of we could do that, and then we could grab a, let's grab some flowers here, like white flowers, nice little white flowers, yellow flowers, purple flowers, recent materials, purple flowers, cute, let's get a lot more of these guys, okay, that's too many, that's cool, you want to see a cool trick? See how those flowers are like so evenly dispersed. It's like very, very obvious. Um, something we can do is we can jump into, grab a shader here, and then we can just like freaking make sure that the shader is affecting these flowers. And if we go into the shader parameters, you'll see that what's doing is changing the scale by 0.5. Switch that to one, and then we can come down to our flower patch here and just make the size much smaller um, and then we come back to our shader and we can increase we'll say the the shading is happening by noise and uh, the noise has some contrast maybe we actually need this flower patch to be a bit bigger but it already broke it up a bit and what's cool is if we come into here we can actually crank up this global scale of this noise and depending on how big we make it, we'll get more and more kind of separated patches. 
If I zoom out, you'll see what's happening. It's like creating a... It's scaling up and down a noise. Um, and we can also, you know, reduce the contrast. And the patches will be less obvious. If we have it at zero, it'll be completely consistent like it was before. But that goes a long way. Um, so I like something around this range. What is that? Like 80? Yeah. And uh, we do that for the clovers too. So we just came into our clover, um, duplicate our shader because we want it to be a different seed come into our parameter or our shading, change the seed of the noise. Then we drop this into our clover. It's going to have the same thing going on. Again, we might need to scale it down a bit. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's get some big ass flowers in here, dude. Big boys. Let's say we want both floor library carving sunflowers. Where are they? These guys. Um, we just want a hundred of them. Whoops, fifty of them. Make them really, really big. Sunflower global. Size is five, six. She needs to see it. Makes me want to scale these guys up too, honestly. I mean, air clover too. That's better. I hate the colors on these. They're just blah, so bad. We'll fix it. Seed. I mean, oh, I'm changing the seed of the sunflower. The other thing, like, <clears throat> a lot of the sunflowers are pretty much the same. I mean, it's all the same sunflower, and they're kind of obviously that way. So we could come in here, make a few of these guys, and then for each one, we could change the seed of the sunflower. And the scatter will evenly distribute between these five, just like a cloner does. Um... Nice. All right. Um, let's uh, let's 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 make this cap glossy. And let's give it some some roughness. And let's make sure these arms have some textures on them. This is all our grass. And, uh, right. That is just, those sunflowers are just hideous, bro. Hideous. She's the stem. We already, we already made prettier. I think we made it prettier. Either way, it's, it's prettier in my opinion. Uh, looks like the leaf is the biggest problem. So we're just going to material, convert, do our same thing here. Um, node editor, collect correction, transmission on. But maybe bring up its exposure. Drop the saturation, a bit more exposure. Cool. funky with it, yo. Starts to get a little more fun, you know. It's like freaking we're working in 3D, baby. Don't need to stick too much to the real, real world. 
convert this material. Maybe we want this guy to be like a... Uh, Sure, why not? Okay, cool. Um, last thing, I'm going to make these petals transmissive because it'll just look better. And then uh, we'll be on our way. Let's just say node editor, uh, transmission, color correction, exposure, saturation. Saturation come down a little bit. All right. Now, let's jump back into our camera. Um, maybe we grab a, we, we turn on some post-processing here. Give it a little bit of bloom. How's that look for us? Maybe we turn up the cut off of the blooms. So we just get it right where we want it. Um, Yeah, that might be kind of buggy. And then um, we, I think I'd like the lighting to be just a little bit more dramatic. Cool. I'd like definitely it's going to push it a lot further. Bring up our depth of field here. That's nice. Cool. Um, I think, I think we should change the color of the clover leaf. So we'll just duplicate this leaf here, drop it on, change the color correction. Which one does it need to be on here? There we go. Uh, Do a few more flowers. Change the C. Maybe make them a bit bigger. We can keyframe that. That'd be fun. Right? Yeah, that'd be super fun. Let's do it. Multi-floor with size. Grab a signal tag for this. Uh, cool. Just say we want them to start about here and end about Say 60 frames in. That's too big. Oh, our camera's moving. Fucking dope, dude. I was looking dope. I think we should bring up our aperture a little bit more in our camera. I'm loving the depth of field. Um, let's just go for like seven for a minute. Yeah, that's cool. The sunflowers are kind of annoying to look at, so we're just gonna move them. Honestly, all this stuff's a little annoying to look at. 
Yeah, it's my, my pile of foliage. Sick, dude. Super sick. Okay, cool. Um, those hands still don't look like they're textured to me, but maybe they are. I guess they are. Uh, let's jump into here. Just grab... This is going to be super quick and sloppy, but let's just grab a little bit of a... Let's drop this color on the... Oh, no, I'll drop this color on the hand. Do the same for this guy. Cool. And I think the stem could actually be this one out of color instead. Dope. Um, there's lots we could do to make our mushroom more detailed too. Um, including like adding different materials to it. In fact, one really like quick and easy thing we could do and just play with is if we come on to our body, this is the head material, we just duplicate this leaf and just drop this guy on here. Um, we go into the UV wrapping and switch it to like cylindrical or uh, spherical. I don't think it looks very good to be honest. Um, but we could try jumping this up to five for this up to five. And then we'd probably maybe spherical. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. Um, I mean, I could try to like make it very, very subtle, uh, and like maybe that's better than just. No, I don't like it. We could also do something where we make our um, make our eyes actually be a specular material, which might be fun. Um, oh yeah, that's sweet. Wow, that's awesome. Yo, actually, let's see what a missive looks like. That might be fucking sick. But specular is also cool. Um, if we wanted to, we would just jump into the specular. Maybe we turn on fake shadows. We. Uh, change the transmission to be a bit more like I don't know like blue ish I mean that's a vibe totally different vibe but it's cool it makes me want to make the lips blue too um what does it look like if they're yellow oh that's sick dude yellow super sick Or red. Pink. Yeah. Or dark. Yeah. Dark. We've seen we've all seen dark before. It's like, oh yeah, cool. Mario or whatever. Let's see him glow. Yeah, I'm super down. Um, but what was the cool color that I was digging? I think it was pink, honestly. Yeah, that's pretty fucking sick. Um maybe we should just make the we should see what this looks like specular too. Just give it a lot of roughness and fake shadows and make it more yellow. But it'll really increase our render times so doing stuff like this. Medium and we'd want the yeah, fake shadows on. Brighten it up. No, that's not good. Mm -mm. Yo, but actually, that could be fun to use this for. Whoops. Um, like, if we wanted to take this material, drop it on here, bring the saturation down a bit. Maybe change the hue up.
I like to crank saturations and I just to kind of be able to see what color I'm working with. It's a different vibe than it was before. I don't know if we like it more or less, but it's looking fucking cool. Maybe we should have that speculative material in these hands. Just see what happens. I mean, that's pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. That's really fun. Um, I like it. Let's, let's, uh, let's give them a light. Um, oh, real quick. Let's see what the eyes look like if they glow. So we'll just grab a material, create emissive diffuse, drop this on the eyeballs. Uh, we just want some texture emission, texture. And maybe we got to come in. Uh, like, yeah, let's just make it a color. Oh, that'll blow it out like crazy. And then we just make it kind of pink and then come back and bring the power down until it's happy. Um, Coming to here, maybe we want to bring up our highlight compression a bit. Bring our bloom first. Then we can come in and bring up our highlight compression in the image here. Mm. So that's, yeah, I mean, it's all right. It's all right. It's cool. Let's just see if yellow is cool. Otherwise I think we should, I mean, that's, that's pretty sick too, to be honest. Emission. What's cool is, you know, we could render that out as its own pass and then we can trigger that in After Effects if we want with music. That's cool. That'll be cool for like a if we do like a nighttime version of this. I mean, that's honestly super cool. <laughs> okay. So compare store render buffer. Let's see what it looks like in comparison to the clear eyes. Oh man, maybe it's cooler. It really draws your attention. Jeepers. I like it. I do like it. I like the pink too. Pink is more cohesive than my but that's just like Look at me. Okay, let's keep it. Wow, they're sick. All right. Undo that. Turn off comparison. Um, maybe we grab a light real quick. Objects, lights, octane daylight. Whoops. Um, yeah, dude. That was cool. It's going to be cool to see him in more. We could probably make it a little bit more dusky of lighting, but I just wanted to grab a... Drop it in our camera, actually. Grab a camera mover. Put it, yeah, I'll put it in the camera mover. I'll put it in the camera. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, camera mover. Objects, lights, area light. Um, object mode. We're just going to, like, amplify the sunlight here, and it'll... It'll give us a pretty cool effect, I think. Um, but out of it's blown out. Yeah. Visibility, boom, no camera visibility, light settings, give me the light color, make the light color sunny color. Dial it back. Put the light behind a little more. Oh ho ho, that's what I'm talking about. Sexy, yo. Maybe we give it just a little more saturation. I don't want to overdo it. How's our daylight? Maybe we just bring the daylight in a little more. Uh, 
I mean, it's pretty cool. Wait, our octane light turned purple? What the fuck? Whoops. That's just great, dude. He's looking freaking great, dude. Um, check this out. If we wanted to just grab a lazy plane here, rotate it 90, make it big, pop it in the back, like so. Lahik sehu. And then, uh, and then we wanted to drop this. We probably want to put it in the camera remover as well. And uh, the same with the daylight or the, the light. Let's call this background sky. Then what we could do is, um, let me move it back a little more. No shadows. We could just grab a new material, drop it on here, make this material a gradient, diffuse gradient. Mm, vertical and then we'd say well sunset vibes are like this is around the base and this is probably around the top ah uh, no that looks horrible yeah more like this around the top yeah then maybe maybe this is a bit more orange Cool. Maybe this is a bit more like purple. -y. It's cool. Something a little. Going for that magical dusky moment, you know, just beautiful. Cool. And we can bring up the turbulence if we want. Um, optional, of course. But this will give us some kind of cloudy <laughs> instant cloud effects. Um,. Only problem is if we do animate our camera's position, then you'll see that these clouds are like moving with the camera, which is a little weird. So this is great for a still, but otherwise you might want to keep it off. Or I guess you could try to like make this thing so big, which I have done this before, <laughs> that you don't really notice. So like if, if we bring it out of our background, a camera mover and the camera moves around, you don't get this happening because it's so freaking huge. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's an option. Uh, yeah, but, but then you're, yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna turn off turbulence for now, which is. Here, diffuse, turbulence zero. And then we'll just drop this guy into our camera mover at an opportune moment when it's like kind of right in the middle, like right there. Just drop our background sky back into the, oh, it's already in the camera mover. Oh, sweet, okay, cool. Right, where our focal length is just changing. Sick, you guys, I mean, that is looking freaking cool. Why does it get so dark right there? That's a good question. Um, I think our oh, our daylight our daylight's not moving with our camera mover. Honestly, that's pretty cool lighting too. But yeah, look at that shot. Wow, beautiful. Maybe we give what if we give his lips that transparent material? Oops. Oh, this is his lips. Yeah. Ah, that's cool.
dope. I love it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Cool. All right, so where, where do we love the lighting with the daylight? I think it's like, is that overkill? Is it more like here? Dang. Because what I want to do once I like it is I'll just drop the daylight in here. And now when we move this around, the daylight will consistently stay with the camera. Oh, wow, that looks so good. I'm loving it. McDonald's style. All right. I think that's it, folks. I mean, a rock or two would be really nice just to add some additional like texture and realism. Um, and I guess the other thing that'd be nice is lighting up the background a little bit. So let's just do those two things and we'll call it a day. I got to actually eat some food. Uh, daylight. So this is our other octane light for the background. You know, what? let's just start from scratch. I have a new octane light holding control. Whoops. Should go under. Oh, it didn't. Weird. What? Weird. All right. You know what? We'll do a white light. Coordinates. Reset the rotation. To the camera mover. Bring it back here. Uh, rotate it. that bring its power way down maybe make its color a bit more yellow let's power back up a bit nice yeah I mean that definitely makes it feels like it justifies all this light on him a little more and that that light on him is probably like a little much we could probably just kind of stretch it out dial it back yeah because we just want some nice rim light and we'd like it to be hitting his base too oh you know what the base probably needs to be more reflective i think that would be wise you know what else would be fun on his material a little bit of sheen you guys ever use sheen? If we come in here, the cap, um, just come to the sheen layer and you can see it just, it, it, it changes the way, I mean, it's hard to tell. It changes the way that the light wraps around the object, but honestly, it's not that great. What if we came into this leaf? We said this leaf is now glossy. With a little bit more roughness. Maybe we said that his cap is slightly... There's a little bit of film on it. Now I kind of miss when it was all like blown out and super colorful and blasted, right? Good old days. Let's do that again. Let's bring back the good old days. Yeah, I like him blasted. Who cares? That is awesome. Um, camera light, exposure, highlight compression. What's that doing for us? Oh, it's doing a lot. Nice. Sweet. These flowers are super blown out. Yeah. What can we do about that? Um, there's a technique I have yet to learn where you can, at least in Octane, where you can, like, control. i fix the flowers. For now. It'll, it'll let you control which light if the light's affecting an object what what the light's affecting i mean like turn off pretty much sorry i'm getting tired like whether or not an object is being hit by a certain light you can you can change that which is cool um this looks great 
I think we're good. I'm very happy with how this came out in this time frame. I think, uh, you know, some butterflies would be nice. Some some rocks. But this vibe is on point. Um, of course, the sunflowers at least should probably be animated. Uh, I can show you how to do that really quick. So we just take this sunflower, drop it in a new project, press play. We'd want to go to Hyperwind and uh, 240 wind on looping wind bump the sky up to 240 so now it's looping but it's really ugly wind in my opinion so we see mm, what we want is we want the wind speed to come way down I thought um the wavy see leaf wind global the leaf wind is too much branch wind global branch wind's probably too much um mm. there we go speed multiplier okay and the, the leaves and petals speed multiplier could also come down uh. Better. Okay, cool. So we just take this sunflower, jump back into here, paste it, and then swap these guys out. Make sure to change the seed. Cool. And, uh, yeah, sweet. Nice. Um, make sure multi floor, uh, hyperwind is only on the render because it'll really bog down your preview. We could add trees, you know, we could add some freaking, some. Some plants, but I think what we're gonna do, I think we're gonna call it. I think this is a very successful tutorial. Thank you for joining me. Um, we've been going for almost two hours. I'm gonna just drop this guy in a quick subdivision surface. Whoops, which would be on this guy, dancing mushroom. What's this? Oh, what? What is this? Oh, I forgot to put this guy in here. Subdivision surface. I'll release and move him out for the render. Um, definitely going to slow down our preview. Oh, one more thing before I use the subdivision surface. What's cool about this, though, is we could... We can make an instance real easy of this little feller. Um... And we could just put him, like, wherever, you know? Whoops, not a bull. Come in here. We'd want an instance. Or a dancing mushroom. You know, so he could be, like, there could be another one over here who's, like, facing this direction. And Ultimately, my plan is to, to create a bit more of an environment um, that we can, like, move the camera through and then be able to have these guys all kind of dancing throughout that environment. But just for fun, if we play this, you know, now I've got a few more mushrooms dancing. It would, it would be better to kind of tweak their, their signal tags and stuff. So it feels more like they're, uh, all doing something slightly different or even better would be if there were like 
you know, somewhat interacting with each other, dancing off of each other, um, which we can do. But that's definitely a part two tutorial vibe. I'm getting tired of talking. But yeah, now if we wanted, we would have these guys in the background that are just kind of like freaking also boogieing down and shows you that this mushroom is totally alone in his beautiful, happy universe. There's other happy mushrooms out there, you know, which I feel like we all need to hear every once in a while. Dope. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time. Okay, okay, final thing, final thing. Octane render, output settings. Uh, we're gonna save this as a, pretty much we just wanna make sure that we have a PNG sequence, outputting all frames, I'll go 1920. And, uh, yeah, that's really it. Our sample count's probably fine as it is. Um, oh, never mind. Maybe like 1,600 samples. It's looking good at, what is that? 350 samples? Wow, it's really lightweight render. 512? Let's do 512. Cool. Um, save. Well, that was a long tutorial. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's going to watch that whole thing, but if you made it to the very end, thank you so much for sticking with me, and I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions or ideas, drop them in the comments. Uh, I'd love to do more of these and I can tell I'm improving by talking through my process. So I hope it was helpful and I would love to do more. Please ask for another if you like this. Thanks a lot. Like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.